And our next topic is more common than you might think. Not one that you may have lent so much thought to, but it's more common than you may think. And again, Rav Kuf's worldview was accepted as the mainstream Jewish worldview. And Rav Uziel's worldview was rejected from the plate of Judaism. This could have to do with doctors, people who are in medical school. Someone who's in medical school, by default, has to do all kinds of things on cadavers, human bodies that were donated to science. Someone who's not a, a medical student, but is a doctor, may have to perform autopsies or all kinds of things. Whenever you deal with people after they pass away and before they're buried in Jewish law, you go into this gray area of not Jewish law, but Jewish emotions. Kind of like what we've been writing on today. Jewish emotions are a very hard thing to define and to put into boxes and to give rules to. Some Jews feel a certain way. Some Jews feel another way. Some Jews feel that organ donation is the biggest mitzvah you could possibly do because you'll save someone else's life. Some other Jews will feel, not based on law, that if I donate my organs, then maybe I won't have enough organs when Mashiach comes and my body won't be resurrected properly because I'm missing limbs and body parts and all kinds of things like that. Where that came from? Both of those opinions came from emotion. There are times where you are legally allowed to donate organs and times when you can't. Nothing to do with your emotions. Just to do with the way that halakha dictates. But again, it's a gray area. It's a gray area. And that leads to many people to feel that this is what Judaism says. Are you allowed to donate organs in Jewish law? Yes, no. See, there you go. <laughs> so, there you have it. There you see, that's, that's exactly what I meant. We have this famous argument between Chacham Rabbi Yosef and Rabbi Yeshiv. Right. Their argument is not whether you are, but rather when you are. What are dictates you a person? To receive an organ oh wait, who said no? You said no. Another... Yes. Are you ask answer Paula's question? Because I say you are allowed to donate organs. Are you allowed to receive? Um, I can tell you that in South Africa, when my mother needed something, she wasn't allowed to receive. She wasn't. No. Why not? The girlfriend that had a heart transplant from a 17-year-old. I never, I never heard. Boy, right? Yeah. Thank God it saved her. So they, they won. It was a. Tr- eventually, they came down to a choice of whether it could be a pig valve or a steel valve. I've and never heard in my life that a person. The rabbi eventually said that she couldn't use the pig valve because that's not kosher, but that she could use the steel valve, and that's what they did. I never heard in my life that you cannot receive an organ don- donation in Jerusalem. Never, it's news to me. So, I think in Jewish law there's no precedent, unless there's some reason that I don't know I in that story. It was Rabbi Abrams. <laughs> so, when it comes to... Uh, practically, because in Judaism we'll do anything to save a life. Uh, practically, that's the bottom line. It doesn't make a difference what you think, what you want to do. That's what we'll do. So then the big question is, well, if you're willing to accept organs, why won't you give them? And then you get into all kinds of nice gray areas in halakha, which you'd rather not hear the answer to those questions. <laughs> why do you say that? He tested us out earlier today. <laughs> Let's read the first, the first paragraph or two about autopsies. Are you allowed to take an autopsy? Are you allowed to perform autopsies on dead bodies? Are you allowed to study for science on dead bodies? All kinds of things like that. Out of curiosity. Are you? As, 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 a, as a doctor? Yes. Yeah. As a doctor, yes. Not as a, as a private person. Not as a private person, as a doctor. Yes. yes. If you're not yes. a Kohen. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, if you're not a Kohen, obviously, yes, yes, it's true. No, I think for the study, of, for the purpose of study, no. Yes. Well, the, the, the person's dead, so you're not, there's no story here about saving a life. one has to respect the body of somebody who's passed on. I think you have to have written, written something written. That Are you allowed, instead of burying a body or, or a whole body, to take part of the body to study it? No. 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 It's a, it's a burial. Like, Eventually you'll bury it when you're done your studies. But it's a, it's a very quick, like you have to, like, within 24 hours. Let's read this together. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about a Jewish person. Oh, see, see, well, here. I think it depends on how I'm they die also. Or anybody. Let's read. I'm talking about Jews and non-Jews. And I, I am very aware that there are some people who are going to tell me, and I'm just going to say it so you don't have to embarrass yourself by saying it. Right? That, oh, on non-Jewish bodies, maybe yes, and on Jewish bodies, maybe not. Don't go there. Careful. Okay? <laughs> I'm just ruling things out. The hashkafic difference. Let's start with this. Between Rabbi Cook and Rabbi Uziel, concerning the nature of Jewishness, 
also may dem be demonstrated in other halakhic areas. Uh, autopsies. In 1931, Rabbi Cook, Rabbi Cook was asked whether it was permissible to perform autopsies as part of the training of doctors in medical school. With the an expanding Jewish settlement in the land of Israel, there certainly was a need to train Jewish doctors. Medical training entailed autopsies. Rabbi Cook ruled... Okay, so this is a question. We're building a state of Israel. We're building a state of Israel. And we need to know, can we, can we study bodies... We need to teach people how to do autopsies so they could be, you know, first caliber doctors. Can we do that? Here's the Rabbi Cook rule. And you would think that Rabbi Cook, by the way, normally his answer was anything to further the Jewish settlement of the land of Israel. That's what most people say that Rabbi Cook's world view was. And here you're going to see that that was never his first priority. Rabbi Cook rule. That disgracing a dead body, Nivul Hamet. Nivul Hamet means disgracing a dead body in Judaism. Is a prohibition unique to the Jewish people. Oh. Since the Almighty commanded us to maintain the holiness of the body. He then went on to say that there is a sharp difference between Jews and, and non-Jews with regard to their bodies. Non-Jews consider their bodies only as a biological structure. Why they? <laughs> they eat whatever they, they wish without restriction. They have no reason to be concerned with the issue of disgracing the dead body so long as the autopsy was done for the reasonable purpose such as medical study. Rabbi Cook therefore recommended... Well, let's pause there. What did Rabbi Cook just say? He's not, and please don't... Rabbi Cook is not trying to put anyone down. Rabbi Cook is trying to think outside of the box. This question of autopsies, should it be allowed, not be allowed? Rabbi Cook is saying, we only ask this question truthfully in the Jewish world. In the non-Jewish world, donating your body to science is a very normative occurrence. It's something that happens a lot. Yes. A lot. But people decide whether they want sure. to Sure, and, and the question is if a person decides that they want to donate their body to science, am I allowed to use that body for science? Judaism tells you, at least according to Rav Kook, yes, no. Depends who the person is. Because, because, a Jew has a commandment to make his body holy. And Rav Kook understands part of that commandment to make a body holy is that when it dies, we don't cut it up, we don't put it into pieces, we don't put it into jars, we just bury it because it's holy. A non-Jew never had this mitzvah of making his body holy, and therefore he's allowed to opt out of deciding that his body should receive a burial according to Jewish law. Just like a non-Jew is allowed to cremate himself, and a Jew wouldn't be allowed to. Because a non-Jew is allowed to make that decision. Says Rav Kook, that being said, here is his decision. This is Rav Kook's opinion, remember. Rabbi Cook therefore recommended that the medical programs purchase non-Jewish bodies for the purpose of scientific research. He then stated that the whole category of disgrace of the dead body stems from the fact that humans were created in the image of God. But this image of God is manifested particularly in Jews due to the holiness of the Torah. Period. Rav Kook understands when it says that man was created in the image of God, that that was only referring to Jews. No, that's not true. It can't be. Because that's not what the Torah says, at least not according to our reading of the Torah. Everybody's created in the image of God. Well, Rav Kook is telling you not. I understand that. Yeah, but you have to understand why he's saying what he's saying. He's, he's building up his theory. This is his theory. So? The Jewish attachment to Torah and mitzvot thus not only characterizes the Jewish soul, but also imparts holiness to the Jewish body. Think of it in very interesting terms. You have a talit bag, a tefillin bag. Yes. You know the bag you put tefillin in? Yes, yes. That tefillin bag, when you buy it at the Judaica store, it says tefillin on it. It doesn't have anything in it. Just It's an empty bag you buy to put your tefillin in. Yes. Leather, velvet, whatever it is. Can you take it and throw it in the garbage if you don't want it? No. Yeah, before you... Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? What is it? Bag. It's, bag. it's just a bag. It's the moment you put your tefillin in it, that bag now becomes holy. holy. And when you take your tefillin out of the bag, can you just throw that bag out? No. 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 Because that tefillin imparted holiness on the bag. And that means that even if you would keep your tefillin in a Ziploc bag, you keep your tefillin in a, in a plastic shopping bag from Vons, 
that plastic bag would receive holiness from the tefillin that was inside of it. So too with the mantle of a Torah. You buy the mantle of the Torah, you don't like it. They made a spelling mistake. Can you throw it out? No. Yes, if you didn't use it. If you did use it. But if you used it, you can't. It has to be buried. That's what we're saying. So if Cook is saying the body is a similar thing. The body comes to the world and has an option to be have tefillin, have Torah put inside of it. If that option was taken, so now you can no longer do anything to disgrace his body after it dies, like cutting it apart, which Cook understands to be a disgrace to the body. That's, that's assuming that cutting apart and doing an autopsy is a disgrace to the body. But the person who decided that they want their bag just to be a bag, they don't want to fill it up with Torah, they don't want to put tefillin inside of it, they don't want to put it... So, they have the right, when they pass away, to say... Throw this bag away, burn it, cut it up, make a make patents out of it, whatever you want. That's what Rav Kook is suggesting. And Rav Kook is everything, yes, so if you have to have a school in the land of Israel, you should not use Jewish bodies, but you should take non-Jewish bodies. This is Rav Kook's worldview. Not out of any hatred towards non-Jews, you have to again remember this is not Rav Kook's Rav Kook. If you read about some of his writings, Rav Kook it says some very interesting things that are, are pretty radical about accepting non-Jews and universalism and Judaism. But in this halachic ruling, it doesn't come across so strong. Let's read about Rabbi, Rabbi Uziel says. Much better than to end off with this. Who wants to read the next paragraph for me? Anybody? Rabbi Uziel wrote a lengthy response on the subject of autopsies, although he specified that his response was theoretical rather than a formal legal ruling. In Hebrew, this is the halacha ve'lo Rabbi, Rabbi Uziel... I was a little bit humble when he wrote this article, which he said, I'm suggesting my thoughts to the Jewish community. Whoever wants to take them can take them. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. I'm not ruling this in my capacity as the chief rabbi. I'm ruling this as a private rabbi who wants to suggest this to peers for discussion. That's what he says. In reviewing the halachic literature on Nebul Hamed, disgracing a body. Uh-huh. Uziel, rabbi Uziel concluded that this category applies only when a dead body is treated disrespectfully. Autopsy is performed in a respectful manner for the sake of medical knowledge do not constitute, according to Rabbi Uziel, Nibur Hamed. Let's pause there. Rabbi Uziel says, you're assuming that an autopsy is Nivul Hamed, is disgracing a body. Mm-hmm. says, that's only if you do it in a disgraceful fashion. But if you do it out of some medical need, if you do it out of a way that perhaps you're trying to figure out what happened to this body so you can pursue, you know, pursue justice, or who knows what it is, so it says Rav Uziel, that's not disgracing a dead body. Let's keep reading. He points out that there have been many rabbinical sages throughout Jewish history who are also medical doctors. And now he says something that he's not proving. He's just assuming. He's assuming. Let's see what he assumes. Like who, who, which Jewish ra- rabbis or medical doctors? Rambam, 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 and Rambam, Rambam Nachmanides yes. also. They, we had a number of our Jewish sages who were doctors. Yeah. They could not have learned their profession without performing autopsies. But he doesn't know what bodies they used. Right. Rabbi Uziel said, What do you mean what bodies they used? He doesn't know if they used Jewish bodies or non-Jewish bodies. It doesn't make a difference. He's saying that his assumption is Nivul Hamet. It only applies when you disgrace a body, not when you do an autopsy on a body. Okay. And therefore it doesn't make a difference what bodies they use. He says, but I can tell you with certainty that our rabbis must have used bodies when they were performing autopsies because of the things they write. What a heart looks like, what it sounds like, what, what veins connect to where. They clearly didn't do these things with some x-ray Kabbalah you know, eyes that they wore. Right? This is right. something they checked out on, on their own. But he's not actually confronting Rabbi of Cook's uh, opinion. You'll see. Not yet, okay. Rabbi Uziel states that in a situation of great benefit to everyone, where there's an issue of saving lives, we have not found any reason to prohibit, and on the contrary, there are proofs to permit. This is the style of Rabbi Uziel's writing. Much less confrontational than other rabbis, much less uh, uh, direct, and a little bit beating around the bush, but only out of humility. Don't take him that he's not sure about what he's saying. He's very sure about what he's saying. He's saying, I have not found... Said, I read Rav Cook's letter. says, I don't agree with his thesis, and I don't find any reason to prohibit an autopsy on a body if it's not done in a disgraceful fashion, meaning if it's done in a respectful fashion, then it's, it's, it's an uh, opposite to that. I actually see there are great proofs to perform an autopsy. It could save life. It could help the the greater community, medical community. Said so I see reasons to perform an autopsy. 
Rabbi Uziel considers the question of whether it would be preferable to obtain non-Jewish bodies for the purpose of autopsies. His response is sharp and unequivocal. Now is when he gets angry. Not angry. I don't want to say Rabbi Uziel. But now is when he gets sharp. So until now, whether to do autopsies, not to do autopsies, that's one thing. He says, but to tell me about Jews, non-Jews, listen to what he says, and with this we're going to end the class. Wow. Certainly. Well, Rabbi Uziel, who suggested the doctor um, become his partner? Or was it his predecessor? Re, uh, Rav Uziel's predecessor, yeah. Rabbi Yaakov Meir. But he was very happy to be working with Rav Kook. He wasn't against Rav Kook. Yeah. Does someone read this for me? Certainly. Anybody? Rabbi Uziel considers the question of whether it would be preferable to obtain non-Jewish bodies for the purpose of autopsies. His response is sharp and unequivocal. Certainly this should not even be said, and more certainly should not be written since the prohibition of Nibul stems from the humiliation caused to all humans. Period. This Rav, Rav Uziel, not only should you not have thought this thought, but you should have never even written it down. Sometimes I hear Jews talk about non-Jews, and they say silly things, and they say, you have to be really careful about the things that you say. In our history, they've used things against us that are much less than the things that you're saying. And it's caused disaster for the whole world. You have to be very careful. Just because today you're happy that you're Jewish and you're proud and you can march around the streets, some of the things that you believe, says Rav Uziel, you have to keep to yourself. And if you want to say that, don't you dare write them down in a book, says Rav Uziel. And then he says, um, that, is, that is to say, it is humiliation to cause the body of a human created in the image of God and graced with the knowledge and understanding to master and rule over all creation to be left disgraced and rotting in public. There is no difference between Jews and non-Jews in the sense that all are created in the image of God. See? Rabbi Uziel says there's no difference. Jews and non-Jews were created in the image of God. The Jew? The Jew has no claim to higher status in this regard. If one were to prohibit autopsies, then no autopsies could be performed on anybody, Jewish or non-Jewish. The result would be that no doctors could be trained with the consequent result of the increase in illness, suffering, and death. Period. We're going to end the class right here for this week. But I want to know this is Rav Uziel's thing. Listen, you want to prohibit autopsy, so prohibit it for everybody. Jewish bodies and non-Jewish bodies. By the way, about organ donation, I'm not giving you a ruling here. But if you're going to tell me that you cannot donate organs from Jewish bodies which presumably when you say that you can accept an organ, that means that you're saying that you can accept an organ from somebody who wasn't Jewish and donated, right? Because they didn't believe that. If you say you cannot donate organs, then Jews and non-Jews may not donate organs, says Rav Uziel. Don't tell me here that between dead bodies there are Jewish dead bodies, then there are non-Jewish dead bodies. Says Rav Uziel, we were all created in the image of Hashem. Rav Uziel says, of course I believe in this concept of a chosen people, of a people that's supposed to be a light to the nations, but that is not something that separates us when we're dead bodies. That's not something that separates us when it comes to conversion. That is not something that a Jew can wave a flag and say, oh, my body is a holy body and your body is not a holy body. Says Rav Uziel, not only should you not think it, but don't you dare ever write it down. Let's end this week. And God willing, God willing, we'll continue next week. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, have a safe trip. Oh, how nice. Is your husband going tomorrow? To your daughter. Um, Tamar, I offer my condolences about uh, about your friend. I offer my condolences about your friend. And uh, you going to a friend? No, no, no. I'm going oh. about about uh, about our previous discussion. I want to share. These are not words of Musa. I'm not angry. I want to share. When a person when a person is not able to see both sides of a coin, what that means is they're not willing to think objectively. And 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 whether you like what someone says or doesn't, it's okay to disagree vehemently. I do it all the time. But you have to at least be able to explain verbally what the other side thinks. Or else that means that you don't truly understand the other side of the coin. Alright, everyone have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you.